Welcome to our video, Strengthening Baltic Security, Next Steps for NATO. I would like to focus on the commentary, the 27th of June 2023, by Mr. Mark F. Kansian, a senior advisor with the International Security Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, in Washington, D.C., Mr. Sean Monahan, a visiting fellow with the Europe, Russia, an Eurasia program at CSIS, and Mr. Daniel Fada, a senior advisor at CSIS and former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Europe and NATO policy. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has radically changed NATO's security environment. The renewed sense of threat is perhaps most acute among the three Baltic members Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia which have long been vulnerable to Russian aggression. Ahead of the NATO leaders summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, next month, the CSIS International Security Program assessed defense and deterrence in the Baltic region. The study considered Russian threats, NATO responses, the requirements of effective deterrence, and progress toward the goals set at last year's historic 2022 summit in Madrid. It concluded that the Baltic states are in a particularly dangerous situation and, despite having taken extraordinary measures for their security, need help from the entire NATO alliance. Decisions made in Madrid and NATO's new strategic concept have set the alliance on the right course for dealing with the new environment. However, implementation of the Madrid commitments has been uneven. NATO leaders will need to ensure the decisions taken in Madrid to reassure allies and strengthen deterrence are on a clear path to implementation. Europe's changing security environment. Russia's war of aggression in Ukraine has transformed the European security environment by dramatically reviving the possibility of cross-border invasion. The Baltic countries are at the forefront of this security shift. The summit host nation of Lithuania faces particular challenges given its location between the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad and Russia-aligned Belarus and the need to keep the Sawalki Gap open a 40-mile, 65-kilometers, corridor linking Poland to Lithuania and the other Baltic states. NATO and Europe have responded strongly and with remarkable unity to the Russian aggression by providing massive aid to Ukraine increasing defense budgets, deploying forces to Eastern Europe, and imposing unprecedented sanctions. The United States has shown a solid commitment to NATO and European security by providing over $75 billion of assistance to Ukraine and deploying over 20,000 additional troops to Europe. However, the United States must balance its efforts in Europe with countering a rising and belligerent China in the Indo-Pacific what its national defense strategy calls the pacing challenge. As a result, Europe will need to step up to strengthen deterrence in the Baltic region. Americans need to keep in mind the stakes involved. The Baltic states vividly remember that, under Soviet rule, free elections ended. National culture was Russified, forced collectivization of agriculture impoverished farmers, religion was suppressed, and over 100,000 citizens were deported to Siberia. Threats to Baltic security. If the Russian invasion of Ukraine were not enough, Putin's veiled threat to the Estonian city of Narva last year shows that the primary threat to the Baltic states comes from Russia. Despite the hopes of the West and many of Russia's people, post-war Russia is unlikely to become a liberal democracy at peace with its neighbors. Instead, Russia will likely be authoritarian, revanchist, suspicious of the West, and a major military power. Although Russia's military has lost heavily during the war in Ukraine, it will rebuild when the war ends. Indeed, Russia has already mobilized its citizens and is taking near-term steps to expand its forces permanently. Estimates vary widely on how long it will take to reconstitute fully. But that reconstitution will happen sooner or later. Russia already has more active military forces now than it did before the war. 
One result of the Russian attack on Ukraine is that the world can now see how Russia plans and conducts military operations. Future attacks will likely have five elements, shock and awe, decapitation of national leadership, missile strikes against fixed military targets, deep heliborn insertions, and deep attacks by armored columns. A Russian attack will be swift, violent, and aimed at rapid and complete victory. There will be little time for defending troops to prepare and get into position. In looking to the future, NATO should hope for the best but prepare for the worst. During the Cold War, NATO adopted the maxim that it should prepare for the Soviet Union's maximum intentions and capabilities. Prudence, combined with an unpredictable and dangerous Kremlin, requires NATO's leaders and military planners to make the same assumption today. As an Estonian general put it recently, the times aren't going to be easier for us in the near future. Russia's threat is not getting smaller. The military status of the Baltic states. The Baltic states are taking strong measures to defend themselves. All three Baltic states have increased their military budgets substantially as the threat from Russia has increased. For example, Lithuania's military budget has tripled since 2008. As a percentage of GDP, all three Baltic countries exceed NATO's 2% goal for military spending, a level only seven other NATO members have achieved. Now all three have agreed to go further and spend 3% of GDP on defense. All the Baltic countries have reinstituted conscription, which only four other NATO countries currently have in place. As a percentage of the population in uniform, the Baltic countries are far ahead of most of the rest of NATO. Lithuania, for example, has 0.82% of its population in uniform. Whereas the United States and Germany have only 0.41 and 0.22% respectively. Since joining NATO in 2004, Lithuania has increased the number of personnel in uniform by 70%. Gaps and geostrategic vulnerabilities in deterrence and defense. The Baltic states have several major geostrategic vulnerabilities, they lack strategic depth as a result of their small size. Whereas Ukraine has been able to defend in depth and use that depth to buy time for strengthening its defenses, the Baltic countries have no such option. Vilnius, for example, lies only 18 miles 30 kilometers, from the Belarusian border, where Russian forces are now based. For reference, Russia penetrated 152 miles 244 kilometers, into Ukraine in its attempt to capture Kyiv. NATO reinforcements must travel long distances to get to the new front line. As much as 10 times as far as during the Cold War. The Sawalki Gap, running between Russia's Kaliningrad enclave to the north and Russia-friendly Belarus to the south, constitutes a major vulnerability in the modern equivalent of the Cold War Fulda Gap. Russian missiles and artillery on both sides of the gap would create a gauntlet of fire in wartime for any NATO attempt to reinforce the Baltic states by land. Russia might even take the high-risk, high-payoff action of trying to close the gap with ground forces. The inherent vulnerabilities and the small size of the Baltic countries and their militaries mean that, despite their extraordinary efforts, the Baltic states cannot defend the region without the help of the entire alliance. Made in Madrid, NATO's commitments to strengthen defense and deterrence. Russia's 2014 aggression in Crimea and the Donbass indicated that the future might not be as peaceful as NATO had once hoped. In response, the defense budgets of NATO's European members have risen by a third. Forward deployed multinational battle groups were established in Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Putting more boots on the ground. Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year accelerated this process. At the Madrid summit, NATO members agreed on a new strategic concept, the alliance's capstone policy document, 
that returned NATO to a Cold War-style strategy of forward defense through combat-ready forces deployed as far east as possible. To implement this new concept, the member states made several commitments to enhance defense and deterrence. Identifying Russia as the most significant and direct threat to allies' security and to peace and stability in the Euro-Atlantic area, inviting Sweden and Finland to join the alliance. Setting a goal of expanding the battalion-sized battle groups, around 1,000 troops, to full brigades, up to 5,000 troops. Developing massive reinforcement forces, up to 300,000 troops ready at one month's notice, and pre-positioned equipment in the Baltic region to speed deployment in a crisis. And enhancing command and control, including establishing division-level structures. However, implementation of the commitments NATO made at Madrid is lagging behind the rhetoric. Although Allied defense spending continues to rise and NATO has implemented a robust exercise program to reassure allies and deter Moscow, divisions on defense spending continue. With most members not meeting the 2% goal, progress on scaling up the existing enhanced forward presence missions, strengthening regional plans, and generating reinforcement forces appears sluggish. One example is Germany's ongoing struggle to deploy a full brigade in Lithuania despite having Europe's largest economy and one of Europe's largest militaries. That's all for part one.